We're joined from New Delhi by Alvite Ninktojam, an expert on Israeli-Indian military ties. And with me in the studio is Dr. Shalom Wald, senior fellow at the Jewish People Policy Institute, who co-authored a new book called India, Israel, and the Jewish People. Welcome, gentlemen. Dr. Wald, let's start with you in the bigger picture. You chart in your book India's growing involvement in the Middle East and note that beyond its primary interest in energy, this dangerous neighborhood has created a convergence of interest with Israel vis-a-vis -vis the common threat of radical Islam. Please explain. True. In the last 20 years, India marched into the Middle East in quiet but still giant steps. Uh, today, India has 7 million workers in the Middle East. Its trade with the whole Middle East is twice its trade with China, twice its trade with the United States, hmm. which has created enormous uh, links, economic links, financial links, etc., etc. And at the same time, India became more and more victim of Islamic terrorism not directly from the Middle East but from its immediate neighbor and so has Israel been uh, uh, attacked by terrorism so by Muslim Islamic terrorism Arab terrorism so this has created a, a, a convergence of strategic interests mm -hmm. uh, between the two countries and the will to cooperate in uh, technological political and other means to SWAT and fight terrorism. Well, in your book, you characterize Modi's election in 2014 as a watershed for Israeli-Indian uh, ties. And you note that after decades of very tacit uh, strategic cooperation in the shadows, now things are unapologetically out in the open. Absolutely. And, uh, and Modi is a revolution. His election has... Uh, uh, destroyed an old taboo of Indian politics, which was that a friend of Israel can't be the leader of India because India has to be very careful with uh, Muslim sensitivities. And Modi has shown that you can be a friend of Israel and the leader of India and be elected by a large majority and maintain all the best links you had before with the Muslim world. That's interesting that mm -hmm. India has, has been able to do a balancing act where today the Muslim world does not make uh, its relationship with India dependent on India's attitude towards Israel. You should note the 15 percent of the population which is Muslim. And the Muslim population has not moved, has not protested, has not rioted when Modi turned towards Israel. Maybe they didn't like it, but Modi has been very careful also to include uh, his uh, Muslim population into his plans. Mm -hmm. He spoke to them. And Dr. Are... Wald, let's take it over mm -hmm. to Alvite oh, yes. in uh, Alvite. Delhi. And uh, Alvite, uh, Israeli-Indian defense trade has averaged nearly a billion dollars over the past several years. And under Modi, we're seeing a lot bigger and much more prominent deals. How so? It is because of the, uh, the relationship has come out much stronger than how it was before. The nature of the arms cooperation or the defense cooperation between India and Israel is very comprehensive at the moment. Earlier, there were lots of innovations about coming out in the public, but at the same time, under the new government, ever since in May 2014, we are attaining that uh, level of comfort between the two countries in dealing with you, with the Israelis. So uh, since defense cooperation has been the mainstay of our relationship from the past many, many years, this is bound to happen. And this was, in fact, the kind of uh, perceptions people had at the moment when Modi was elected as a Prime Minister of India. And defense was one that is getting a very, very heavy push at the moment now. And it's much more than defense trade, isn't it? Oh, yes. Uh, yeah, apart from the military deals, uh, yes, there are some expectations about uh, some sort of uh, deals to be signed between the two governments during the visit of our Prime Minister to Israel. But it is difficult to say on, uh, on which uh, categories the, the deals would be signed. But uh, it will be more on the, uh, it will be more on uh, missile systems, anti-missile systems, uh, border protection uh, uh, equipments and technologies. Apart from the uh, joint collaborations we have come having for the last many years, and with this Make in India project, uh, which is ongoing in India, is going to be we are, we are going to see further improvements in this regard. Dr. Wald. Yes. Now, despite the ever-growing strategic cooperation between India and Israel, India at the same time is cultivating what it has called a strategic partnership 
with Iran, and it's also deepening its ties, military ties, particularly naval ties, with the Sunni states in the Gulf. Uh, India's relations with the Sunni states are very strong and they get better. Mm -hmm. India, uh, India su has succeeded to walk a fine line between Iran and the Sunni states with in very uh, careful indications that India is more and more turning towards the Sunni world, towards Saudi Arabia and the United Arab Emirates. Mm -hmm. uh, now, both the Sunni Arabs and the Iranians need India. They need India as a market, uh, you know, that the uh, geopolitical uh, situation has completely changed because of fracking. Today, mm -hmm. India does not more depend on the oil producers than the oil producers depend on India, not just India, but Asia. Without Asia, the oil producers have no market. They can't sell in America, they don't sell in Europe. It's Asia which uh, is essential for their survival. Uh, and at the same time, um, at the same time, they know that India has been a giant neighbor for 2,000 years and will remain a neighbor. Let's stop at this uh, yes. juncture and throw it back to Alvite. And uh, uh, India has increased its activity here in the region, all through the Med, uh, west coast of Africa, into the Persian Gulf. Do you expect all this to be even more enhanced under Modi? Uh, we will have to see that. Like, naval cooperation has picked up like over the period of time with uh, with Israel. Uh, that is one thing of all the of all the apart from buying the equipments for the naval forces. Like the sort of uh, military cooperation, especially on the naval cooperation, is still not that very strong. I'm not saying that it is bad or low, but there needs to be more work done on that regard. So I wouldn't be surprised uh, in the days to come if we see more of a, more of an exchange between the two uh, units. Dr. Wald, in your book, you note uh, over the decades India's uh, activity uh, under the auspices of the UN in various peacekeeping missions uh, here in this region, from the Suez Canal to the border of Lebanon, where in 2000, under the nose of Indian forces, Hezbollah uh, um, uh, kidnapped three Israeli soldiers. Now, Israel has a terrible um, impression of peacekeepers, and how, if at all, is this influencing? Israeli Indian ties? It does not influence Indian Israeli ties at all. Uh, people in the Middle East, not only Israelis, the whole Middle East doesn't see UN troops with their blue helmets as Indians of Fiji or, or, or Indonesians, etc., etc. Uh, nobody knows exactly where the Indians are. I'm not sure they are in Lebanon. You said under the nose. There were no Indian troops, no UN troops around when uh, the sp uh, three Israeli boys were kidnapped. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So uh, I, I, the, the, I see no link whatsoever with India's peacekeeping efforts under UN umbrella and the Middle East attitude towards India and vice versa. Well, I think this is completely disjointed. All right. Well, yeah. thank you very much, Dr. Shalom Wald and Alvite Ningtojan. Thanks for joining us at Strictly Security. And coming up, Israel's defense trade with India predates by decades the establishment of formal bilateral ties. Stay with us for a report on its evolution from the shadows under Nehru and Gandhi to the broad sunlight it enjoys today under Prime Minister Modi.